Morning everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to fit the Triumph nylon panniers to a Thruxton R and show you what the panniers are like, where to get them because the Triumph price is ridiculous. They're available from other registered Triumph outlets uh, for around about £120. So what I'm going to do is show you the what you get in the pannier fitting kit. So you get this attachment which clips under the seat and this is what the bags fasten on to. You get this bracket which holds the panniers. You get some metalwork to fit the panniers, replacement bolts etc. Um, and the important thing is if you're not sure how to do this and you want to read the instructions the part number on here uh, if you look that up on the Triumph Accessories site you can download the installation instructions so this is the pannier and I can't imagine they're very good for heavy loads they do have a weight limit on specified on the instructions I'll put that in the comments but this is all that holds the uh, the pannier to the bracket and these clips here clip it onto the part that fits under the seat so if you imagine putting a lot of weight on that that's a lot of strain on these little pieces it's not a mechanical fixing so we have to be a bit careful about what we're going to put in these so I'll come back to the panniers themselves a bit later but let's fit this the hardware on first so the tools you need to do this are a 4, a 6 and an 8mm Allen key, a 12mm socket, 12mm spanner, a wrench and a spacer bar if it's a small wrench like this one uh, so that you can work on the bike easier. So we're going to start off by removing the seat so that's the seat off and you'll see this side I've already fitted the kit so you can see how it looks I'll show you from the other side when it's on what it looks like and these bits fitted on here so let's start with this bit it's probably the easiest bit to do So I'm only going to work with one of the spaces for now so I don't drop everything. They go this way around with the fixings clear of the suspension. If you tried it the other way around of course you would have that under the seat. So I think that's fairly straightforward. They go there. It's worth pointing out that this bit goes in here. And the screw goes through there. Finger tight for now. And then here we go. So now they're in, we'll just nip them up with the wrench. There are torque settings in the instructions, but this doesn't have to be mega tight, just as long as you check on them regularly. I'll put thread lock on them, but that's that done. So I've moved all the parts I need over here. I've got them all with me. I know what they are. And I'm going to start undoing the suspension bolt now don't be worried you take this out as long as you don't wiggle your bike around like crazy that's not going to go anywhere it's not going to jump off so we can just undo that one Okay, that's that. 
that off. We need to keep the washer. And we put this to one side. Next, we're going to undo this bolt so we can fit the bracket on behind it. Span around the back. Oops, let's get the right size. This is your six millimeter. Off really easy, and we just need them to off the back. There you go, remove the nut. We get given a new nut with the kit because it's a nylon uh, thread in there part way through to make sure it locks. You could put thread lock on there if you want. I just keep checking my bolts every so often. So, we're just going to fit, I'm going to fit the rail to the bottom and just put that nut on so this this bit here goes behind here and on the bolt uh, I'm going to put this bit of cloth over my exhaust just in case that decides it wants to interfere we don't want to damage the exhaust. And just put this new nut on the back, spin it up finger tight as far as I can. We don't want to do it fully tight because we've got to maneuver the top bit into place so that's secure. So the next bit is this bolt which is going to go in the suspension and what I don't like is we're replacing this which looks quite nice big machined shiny with a standard bolt it just seems to me to be a bit of a, a cop-out why they couldn't make the metal work such that you could actually uh, reuse this part which looks much nicer than this one but anyway that's what we do So the washer goes against the suspension, that's important that that goes there. The arm comes up to there and we thread the bolt through, so that's it. Bracket, washer and bolt. This is your 12 millimeter socket to tighten this up. Torque settings are in the instructions. going to tighten up this bottom bracket because we didn't fully tighten that so that will need the spanner and the allen key the eight millimeter allen key to tighten that up That's all the hardware in place. So I'm gonna put the seat back on and then we're gonna show you the panniers and how they clip into all this. And then um, obviously they're not secure against theft. You just pop those clips and slide it off. I'll show you how I secure them to the bike. Hi, we're now gonna fit the pannier. Now it's really simple. This just slides over there. And then these, if you open this up, it's got Velcro on it, you just pull it apart. These clip on here, 
is not easy to do with one hand. Uh, so I'll clip these on and then come back with the camera. So there we go, clipped in. Same on the side, clipped in. So as you can imagine, someone seeing that in the car park can just unclip, unclip, remove really quick. And they can open these up as well. So we need some sort of security. You get rain covers with the panniers because they're not waterproof, they're water resistant. So waterproof covers have a zip pocket a little mesh pocket and this is the main area of the pannier with a drawstring to tie that tight but overall I've been happy with these I have reinstalled these racks to show you how to do it because I've had them on before as you can see with the dirt on the panniers so this wasn't the first time I installed them, I just thought I would take the kit off, put it back on so you could see how it was done. So I know I was very worried about removing this <laughs> suspension bolt, I expected everything to pop apart, but it didn't. Right, that's them on the bike, totally insecure. I'm now going to show you how I uh, go about making them a little bit more secure they're never going to be secure Stanley knife through there or cut the zip you're going to be straight in you know just like and you're straight into it but in the main it's the opportunist that you want to stop how are we going to secure these the zips have got very similar to your travel luggage a loop that goes through and I'm just using some combination locks so that combination lock will keep the zip secure but it doesn't stop someone taking these off the bike so what I'm going to do or what I do do is I thread this under the seat and lock it to the two locks gives us a degree of protection this is a I mean you're going to be able to cut through that with any decent sized snips I would think but again it's to stop the opportunist so again we need the seat off on off on off seat is off and these are going to go through the handles through the handle there through the handle there this is perfect length and it's going to go into the combination lock now just quickly show you so there you go that's that locked you can't undo the zip and once the seats locked in place with this jammed underneath it and the other side locked up which I may as well do right so that's the basic idea that gets jammed under the seat it's locked onto this which is holding the zip shut And you can use this as a, a helmet lock as well. So you just undo that, thread that through your helmet, do it back up, rest your helmet on your pannier. And uh, you've got a helmet lock as well. So this is just gonna go under the seat through here. But an addition I'm gonna make, because this will eventually rub on the paint and damage this paint, is I'm gonna fit some of this transparent protection film onto here just where this cable is going to go and rub uh, to protect that paintwork so that's just straightforward we just have that there put the tape over these bits just between here and here that'll protect that paint now to stick that on um, the best way to do that is to get some uh, isopropanol alcohol or rubbing alcohol uh, just to clean any grease off so the tape sticks better okay that's the tape on protection tape just where that's going to go now i'm going to put the seat back on 
on our securely fitted panniers. That's the seat fitted and these aren't going to go, you're not going to be able to pull them out from underneath there. I am a bit worried about the paint on the bottom of the seat there so I might put some more of that tape just under there where you can't see it. But that's them secure and like I say you can use this to fix your helmet too as well. So I don't think they look bad as panniers on a bike. I've got better pictures of the bike with the panniers on, I'll put them on the end of the video just so you can see what it does look like. So with the panniers off, that isn't too obtrusive, it's not like one of these horrible big square brackets and it is nicely chromed so it looks okay. I actually thought of getting something made, either a little plate welded in there and put a Union Jack on there or maybe another Triumph logo or something just so that it makes a feature of it um, but they are quite disguised sort of follows the line of the tail so I'm, I'm happy with the way it looks with them off uh, I'm rubbish at these garage videos but it is an attempt to make a job for you easier because I've done it before and maybe seeing someone else do it and reading the instructions at the same time makes it clearer so you get a rain cover with the panniers quite a bit of space inside mesh pocket a zip pocket and this compartment here with straps so you can strap things in keep them from falling out when you open it up and you can tie all that up with this cord so there uh, 15 litres I believe, which doesn't sound a lot, but how much do you need when you go on a trip? I think most people, uh, most people pack too much. So let's just have a talk about that. Let's zip this thing back up, stop it falling all over the place. Let's talk about what we pack to go on a motorbike trip. Too much is the answer. So if you think you're going to spend most of your day riding and you're going to be in your riding gear so it's only at night when you park up for the evening and you're going to go out for something to eat you probably need to take a spare a pair of jeans change your shoes uh, some underwear t-shirts maybe a fleece something like that um, and because you're riding all day, what I would do is uh, the clothes I ride in would go in my washing, if you like, in my dirty laundry part of my pannier. Um, I would put on clothes to go out for the night, so fresh socks, underwear, t-shirt, etc. But they would be the clothes I would wear for riding the next day. So you actually uh, don't need two sets you don't need evening wear as such and riding wear it's mainly just jeans and shoes so if you think of I don't know a four day trip or a four night trip that's uh, four sets of underwear four sets of socks four t-shirts one pair of jeans one fleece one pair of shoes that's easily going to fit into one of those um, panniers I tend to put the shoes in the other pannier put them in with the tools because I always take some tools with me you never know what's going to happen and the old uh, duct tape tie wraps uh, and a small tool set always worth having um, when you've got something like the Triumph Thruxton which has tube tires you need breakdown cover because if you get a puncture you can't do anything about it it's got to go and get a new uh, new tube and with it not having the centre stand and not being able to carry anything to lift the bike up with you there's nothing you can do on your own so you need breakdown cover if you've got tubeless tires then take a puncture repair kit and one of these little um, electric tire inflators they'll take forever um, but it'll pump your tire up hardly any room i don't like using the co2 
canisters because if you forget to put a glove on when you use one of them you can burn your hand with the cold believe it or not and they never inflate your tyre to the right pressure you've got immediately then got to get to a garage and you're riding on a partly inflated tyre which doesn't do your tyre any good so I use a little uh, electric tyre inflator so small toolbox electric tyre inflator some tape some tie wraps and your shoes in the other pannier and you set for, for four four nights a week a week away you could probably squeeze more out of it personal items such as your wallet uh, cameras anything like that you take I would tend to use a tank bag uh, I've got a Givy tank bag magnetic one um, that I use it's just a small one but you can put your visor cleaning items in here and that's big enough to put a camera in and if you're using a GoPro some spare batteries everyone's worried about these scratching the tank as am I um, and I don't like these bits I'm never going to strap them I don't like these so I'm probably going to cut them off um, but what I've done is I've stuck on some non-slip matting on the back just so that it doesn't move around on the tank and I'll just give this a, a wash over after every trip um, so that coupled with those two panniers and you can take something like the Thruxton away for a, a good week as you'd easy fit that in those panniers traveling abroad with it you'd probably have to add a rucksack as well to put more equipment in or put the double seat on and strap a bag on the back is the other option as well so there are the panniers covered for the Thruxton I hope you found it useful if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down and please leave a comment tell me why um, trying to improve how I do these garage videos for me are always difficult because I don't have enough tripods or anything like that but that's to come um, and if you want to see more of this hit the subscribe button so this is up north biker keep safe and keep riding and hopefully I'll see you in the next one